is now what happens if we connect resistors in series or if we connect resistors in parallel. So let's look at the series connection first. So we have one resistor, a second resistor, maybe a third, a fourth, whatever resistor, and they are all connected in series. So series connection means uh, we have the very same current going through all of these resistors. And um, if we apply Kirchhoff's voltage law, then the voltage drop here and the voltage drop there and the voltage drop there and so on, they must all add up, just as we tried in the experiment before. So we can say, okay, the um, individual voltages minus the total voltage give zero at the end or the individual voltages summed up give the total voltage V in this case. Okay, and so the current through each element is the same. So Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us this, Kirchhoff's current law tells us this. And so now we can use Ohm's law at each of these individual resistors and insert now these voltages into the voltage law. So then the result, what we get is this. And we can get the current because the current is the same through each element. We can get this out of this parenthesis and can say, okay, now um, if we sum up all the resistors, this would give us the equivalent resistance of the series connection. Um, because this at the end, voltage is current times resistance is once again Ohm's law in this case. So for series connection, you just add up the resistors. Okay. So now if we have a parallel connection, so one resistor, second resistor, maybe more resistors, all connected in parallel. Now what happens is that for, for this node here on top or for all the nodes, which is essentially one node, uh, we can write down Kirchhoff's current law. And the current law says now in this case, okay, the total current going in is the sum of the individual currents going through these resistors. And Kirchhoff's voltage law tells us the voltage drop across these resistors is equal each and everywhere. We have the same voltage here, we have the same voltage there, we have the same voltage there. Once again, we would try to replace this parallel circuit of resistors by some equivalent resistance. Um, if we once again use Ohm's law and say current is voltage divided by resistance, second current is second voltage divided by resistance and so on. Um, it's from a mathematical point of view, of course, okay to write it down like this, but it's not super convenient because you always have the fraction. You always would need to take care of this fraction. So in this case, it's nicer to write it down, not as a resistance, but as some conductance. So current is voltage times conductance. Current is voltage times conductance and so on and so on. So now we take all the currents, place all the currents once again into the sum. And then we can say, okay, these, the, the, the voltages, they are all the same. So we can move them out of this parenthesis, um, factor this equation. And what we have left is the sum of the reciprocal values of the resistances. And this is the same as one over the equivalent resistance. So we can say, okay, the equivalent resistance, no, the, 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 the equivalent resistance is one over the sum of one over R1 plus one over R2 plus one over R3 and so on. So it's, it's, it's a bit complicated to calculate this. It's easier to say in a parallel um, circuit connection, the conductance, the, the equivalent conductance, the total conductance is the sum of the individual conductances. So in the series connection, what we had before, in a series connection, equivalent resistance is the sum of the individual resistances. And in a parallel circuit, the conductance is the sum of the equivalent conductances of this circuit. And yeah, this is maybe something that we could also try out um, as the last experiment for today. So 
we had these two resistances. Uh, we had this one here. If I copy this and paste it and call this R1 of the one cable, and if I copy the second one and also paste it and call it R2. So I have these two resistances. And if I take the series one, um, how do I calculate total resistance in series? Ju just the sum, R1 plus R2, and we should get something like 3.97 volts. So now I need to check if I have some some clamp that, uh, and that's why I always have much more boxes than I usually planned because, um, um, so I have a good clamp from a German company called Vago. They are very convenient to do something like this. So I can, I can open it up, um, disconnect this one here. Now take the, let's say the output terminal of this one wire connected here and take the input terminal of the other wire and connect it here. So now they are connected in series. And if I measure total resistance, we get something like a bit more than four ohms, which makes sense. Uh, because we have some, yeah, some additional contact resistance in here, so we, 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 we get something more. Um, okay, so I have, no, I have no second terminal, but I think I can do this with, with, the, with the clamps. Um, so if I would calculate the parallel resistance, how do I do this? 1 divided by R1 plus 1 divided by R2 and then 1 over oops, one over this whole thing. Okay, and what we should get is something that is smaller, smaller than the 2. Uh, so we should get 0 0.9, something like this. So if I have my camera window here once again, um, disconnect this clamp and now both wires are red which is kind of difficult but I have the same wire here and now I need to clamp them together with this clamp this should fit yeah, so I've connected the two inputs in parallel and now I will connect the two outputs also in parallel and the total resistance that we get is 1.0 ohm maybe 1.1 ohm sometimes which also makes sense remember I had 0 0.1 resistance ohm resistance for the measurement cables so in this case I get the 0 0.9 plus a 